Greetings Park. Uh, welcome to the first edition, uh, the first installment, I guess, of Conversations at the Park. My name is Kevin Peters. And I'm Mark Clayton. And we're going to start tonight on this Wednesday night over the next several Wednesday nights of coming to you in pairs or small groups of ministers uh, just to bring uh, a word and a thought just in the midst of a conversation of how God's been working our life and how we've seen him work in the life of this church uh, just to hopefully bring you a word of encouragement. So uh, this is the first one, so bear with us. But here we go. We Mark and I got talking about uh, what our specific conversation might look like. And Mark, you brought up the idea of... Yeah, I, I was just thinking, uh, having a conversation about the Holy Spirit and uh, what that Holy Spirit looks like and means to you and, and uh, just kind of have a conversation uh, about about the Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I love that idea because uh, when I think of the Holy Spirit, what I think of right away normally, my kind of go-to passage of the Holy Spirit is John 14, mm. uh, where he says, I will send the, the, the advocate, the counselor, the Holy Spirit, uh, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I've said to you. So I've always thought, what am I, what am I being taught, and what am I being reminded of at all times mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit? I think that's one of His, um, one of the Holy Spirit's most um, active ways of working in our life is is teaching and reminding, teaching and reminding, um, and so I. I feel like I'm often reminded of something in the right moment. You yeah, know, I mean, you've had yeah, those moments. Absolutely. Um, so, so maybe we can just talk for a minute about during this past few months, what has the Holy Spirit taught you or reminded you of mm -hmm. during this time? You know, and I think when I first think about the Holy Spirit, I, I just naturally in my mind come across this hierarchy: God. Jesus and the Spirit, yeah, yeah, yeah. and oftentimes I I kind of just speak to God or or, or Jesus, uh, and I don't pay much attention to that Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is I'm just sure you're as the much. only one that ever does. That. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it seems to be a pretty common thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I would say you know for me during this time, uh, obviously with my my counseling background, mm -hmm. uh, I, I I just I love the Holy Spirit. I love how the Bible reference or Jesus referenced the Holy Spirit as a, a counselor. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as I go through the day, my conversations with God, Jesus, they're really conversations with, with a counselor. Mm -hmm. uh, believe it or not, you know, I mean, ministers need counselors too. Uh, <laughs> Maybe more than anybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, as, as we've had a lot of quarantine time, a lot of downtime to, to just reflect uh, these last few months, I think the spirit has really uh, come to life, and, and or at least I've accepted him more, or paid attention more to the spirit, and in, in telling me to to slow down. I think mm -hmm. you know, uh, I, I I love people, I love to work, and uh, I can quickly become overwhelmed with just busyness. Uh, and where does God? Where does Jesus, where does the Spirit, where does that Trinity fit in mm. when it comes to, to busyness? The, the go, go, go. Uh, you know, being married, having a family, children, uh, we're, we're all running in different directions. And then you add uh, job responsibilities and, and uh, uh, just meeting with people and loving on people. And, yeah. and it, can, it can quickly become uh, overwhelming. And so... Uh, I think, you know, he's told me to just slow down, uh, seek him first, pay more attention. And as I've done that, uh, I've, I've really been able to, to hear and listen as to what he's telling me my specific gifts and talents are. 
you know, outside we, of just the busyness, outside of the busyness, uh, yeah, you know, you know, and, we, and we've talked a little bit about this, yeah. you know, with our, with our jobs and, and the responsibilities, what we get to do and, and we're blessed to do, yeah. uh, we, we can get pulled in, in many directions. Yeah. Um, and, and as I was telling you, you know, uh, preaching, teaching, it's not my strong suit. Uh, I will step outside of my comfort zone uh, yeah. and and do those. Which things. I and a lot of other people would disagree with you on that, but I understand <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't feel. Super this natural. is a little bit outside of my comfort zone, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know more of my gifts and talents are 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 just that one on one or, or or group. It's sure. it's, it's listening and and guiding and, and coaching and it's the counseling. It's the uh, leadership you know and yeah. and, and uh, putting people in place uh, surrounding you know with with good strong leadership to build up ministries uh, those are really uh, where I think the spirit has has given me great insight mm-hmm. and, and and dialogue so that's just a couple things I think in this time that uh, uh, the spirit has kind of shared with me so like identity kind of mm. kind of a, a re a, a re-identifying yourself with kind of more of who your nature I like is that. And i like that yeah yeah because if we don't have that identity then we're we're running around trying to create that identity yeah. or seeing where we fit in in that identity yeah. and so it's it's narrowing it down yeah. uh to to more specific yeah gifts and talents there's not a whole lot of precedence in scripture i don't think of of god or the holy spirit shouting above all the other voices that we're listening to to try to be louder Mm -hmm. to to communicate something important to us like identity yeah and so it really takes that slowing down and quiet yeah to really start to understand and hear that again absolutely absolutely and if you're you're running all over the place and busy you're not going to have that that slow, quiet time. So, yeah, that's really, really good. Yeah, that's really, really good. Yep. And it's almost as if we were forced to slow down. Yep. And and have that quiet time yep. uh, during this quarantine season. Uh, you know, and, and and in that, I got to thinking too, uh, as I was at home just listening and studying uh, the passage. He maketh me lie down in oh, green wow. pastures. Yeah. You know? I mean, how often have we read that passage over and over? But but this is a kind of a new insight on he maketh me lie down in green pastures. And you see that over and over when people run and run and run and just wear themselves out. If they don't stop and take a rest, either either God or their own body will kind of give out in a way like, yeah. no, you're going to rest. Yeah, yeah. And so, yep. and so, yes. and maybe in a sense, yeah. God's like, yeah. no, my people, you're going to rest. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, I mean, think about that. I mean, emotionally wow, and so physically, I mean, I was, I had my energy. I was ready and willing to get back up here to meet with people. Mm-hmm. And it was just a, a no, stay at yeah. home. Yeah. You know, and, and, and in a sense, we were st- stuck there. Um, uh, and, and really wrestled with that of uh, just having to, to stop and slow down. I wanted to go. I yeah. naturally just wanted to go, go, go. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't have a choice. It... And through that found identity and, mm. and being more in touch with kind of who you are, who God's made you to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. And, and that's a great point, too, because, I mean, how often in the go, 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 how often in the busyness do we lose sight of who God created us to be, who God created you to be? That's, that's special. That's, you know, uh, and it can get overwhelmed. It can get set aside. It can get covered up yeah. uh, because we're, we're trying to do too many things or, or we're just uh, so busy that we lose sight of that focus. Yeah. So is that now a danger for you or do you, do you see that? How is that a danger for us now as we start to, yeah. you know, carefully uh, as of, as of today, mm-hmm. uh, you know, 
Corona cases are maybe spiking again and we're, we're needing to be really careful. But so I say that to say, as we start to maybe lean towards, lean back towards a little bit more normalcy, um, what kind of things do we need to be thinking about to maintain that? Sure. You know, I, I think, I often think of balance. I, yeah. I love that word yeah. balance. And, yeah. and, and really you can apply that to all aspects of life. Uh, because I think life in general, just the reality reality of things, we that you know those scales can tip. Uh, things just naturally get out of balance, uh, one way or or the other. You know, I certainly don't want to become lazy, and and not do anything. You know, that's not my my nature. But that's one end of the spectrum versus just being overwhelmed and and completely bogged down uh, yeah. with with other things. And so there's a balance there that uh, you've, you've got to perhaps reset yeah. or, or find uh, or maybe even reestablish uh, that balance. But, you know, you've got to examine it from time to time to see where you are in that process. And, and yeah. I think that's where the spirit also comes in, you know, because if we get things out of balance... That counselor, that comforter, that friend, that healer, that helper comes in and, and there's a little stirring that's taking place within your soul. He you will know? remind you. He will remind you. Wow. And and there's times where he's trying to nudge me. He's mm-hmm. he's poking me. He's, mm-hmm. he's trying to remind me. Uh, but sometimes I ignore it or sometimes I don't. Uh, you know, I'm just so busy. I just don't yeah. don't recognize it. But but there's always this this constant. It feels like maybe an internal wrestling match, yeah. maybe or yeah. uh, uh, there is just something there that that I mean, he won't go away. And yeah. he's telling this is out of balance. Yeah. We've got to refocus. We've got to reset. Yeah. Uh, so I think one, you've got to just examine from time to time. Uh, where you are on that spectrum and that could go with any aspect of life not just you know being busy or 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 just lazy yeah Uh, we've got to take those moments and and again there's where that time is of just be still you know slow down spend time with with God with the Spirit uh, and listen you know how how, that's a key part there is is listening a lot of word we use around my house a lot a phrase we use around my house a lot is pay attention Mm. Mm. And, and that can go so many ways. I've got young kids, yeah. and so paying attention is, is a big deal in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Uh, but I've, I've found that that's a, uh, something we need to carry every day is mm. pay attention to the people around you, of course. Yeah. Pay attention to what God might be doing in you. Can we, can we just kind of carry with us this idea of I'm always just kind of aware mm. of how I'm reacting to things and how the spirit might be moving me or nudging me in, in different ways. So yeah. Paying attention, I think, is is what what your thoughts just reminded me of. Yeah, and and I love that. Pay attention, and and I kind of think about uh, as we continue to focus on the one, you know, praying oh, yeah. to God yeah. for for that. Bring me that one yeah. that needs to know you, that needs to accept you in in your in their heart. Uh, that is just having such a difficult time that they could sure use your word yeah. right now. Bring me that one. To your point, to your phrase with your family, pay attention. If we're not paying attention, we'll miss them. You know, we'll miss them. I mean, the Holy Spirit could be like, hey, buddy, you know, <laughs> this is the one. Ding, 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 right here. Pay right here. attention. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but if we're not, then, then we could certainly uh, miss those opportunities. Yeah. I like that. That's really good. I also kind of see this time period as a church collectively, uh, how, how God is moving us outside of the, the building walls. Uh, it's been exciting. It's been impressive mm. to see how our church has responded, uh, you know, where, where we couldn't come together at this church building to meet but it, it kind of forced us to get outside and, and, and reach out into the world. Not that we weren't doing that. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Because we had our ways of doing that. Uh, I think God has, the Spirit has helped us use uh, 
many other people's talents and creativity in, in finding different avenues to, to do that in, in our tech savvy world today. Yeah. Um, I, you know, it, it is a time where people need to come and, and know about, learn about, you know, God and, and redefine love in accordance with God and, and Jesus and the Spirit. Uh, but it is also the church's responsibility to be active and pursuant. And again, I just, you know, I love individual talent and creativity and who God made each and every person to be. And, and you know, th- th- during these last few months, we've seen, we've been able to utilize other people's creativity and talents and knowledge that the Spirit has given them to extend outside of what we were already doing yeah uh, to get outside of these walls yeah uh, to be active and uh, uh, pursuant yeah we've always known that the phrase go to church is not quite right when you really think about it because mm-hmm. we, we know the church is the people and so go to church it's yeah. just when you put it like that it's grammatically incorrect right <laughs> right but but now when we've not been able to go to church, yeah. the idea of being the church mm-hmm. has really been forced in front of us of what does this look like for me now to be just a member of the church, a member of the kingdom of God yeah. from my home, yeah. from in my neighborhood, uh, in, in my now smaller circles of influence. Yeah, yeah. What does it mean to be the church? In my family. You know, yeah. and, and one vision that I have in my mind, you know, at, at the very beginning of all this, we had people turning in pictures of their family sitting in their living rooms and, yeah. and having church service. And I can't help but think about the impact of what that looks like on our children. Yeah. Our children, no matter, I think, what age, they'll have these these memories, these these glimpses uh, or, or vivid uh recollections of of the this time where where we couldn't go to the church building so we had church in our home mm. you know i'm i'm guilty going on vacation and there's times where my vacation may stretch over a sunday and 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 you know not every time i'm on vacation do i go to church on, on sunday i know i know <laughs> uh but Again, it's just the the impact to, to our children, yeah. Uh, and and they'll always remember that, and they'll carry that with them. And there will be a lot of of times, perhaps when they go on vacation or just different situations, perhaps where they can't go to a church building, they're going to remember that. Yeah. Uh, the spirit will will remind, we'll remind them, them of that, and and they may more than likely than ever be you know willing to have something wherever they are at that moment with with their friends or their family and just the the knowledge and understanding and now the experience Mm -hmm. of yeah we can do this anywhere anytime yeah it's something it's not something we have to go to it's something we take with us yeah yeah wherever we go yeah so yeah let me uh turn the tables uh and ask you sure uh during these last few months in in quarantine and in isolation and uh, everything else that's that's going on with that. What has the Spirit really impressed on you? What has the Spirit put on your heart? Yeah, I have found um, a new, really delight. I guess is maybe a, a good word, a good way to put it, in just the Word of God. Um, I. I try to get through some books and do some reading as 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 I can before the kids get up in the morning, um, and and one of those took a a real deep dive into the Sermon on the Mount, mm. and and so after I read that book, I I went I just say man I I want to go back and really just just look at the Sermon on the Mount, and you know confession time here as a minister it's easy to make my time in the Word of God about preparing for something mm. and not just for me, just yeah. a, a personal time. And that's, that's something I'm growing and I struggle with and I'm growing in. Um, but I got to, 
I, I found myself going to the Sermon on the Mount, reading through it with kind of some new eyes, and just being blessed by my time in the Word of God. Now, this wasn't this wasn't two hours of just quiet, peaceful, the birds chirping, and I'm just, you know, it was a few minutes at a time, but it, I've been reminded of there is delight and fulfillment mm. in your Word of God. It so often becomes or feels like a duty. Mm. And now, maybe sometimes we need to see it as something that we need to do. You need to do this uh, if you don't feel like it. So... Romans 6, the second half of Romans 6, lines out this, uh, this progression of faith that obedience leads to righteousness. Righteousness leads to holiness. Holiness leads to eternal life. So this eternal life that we want to just experience every day, we just want to pour out of us, sometimes it starts with, I just need to be obedient right now. And that's going to turn into, you know, obedience with some consistency turns into, you know, the way I define righteousness is not just doing what is right, but but having a desire to do what is right. Yeah. Yeah. And that that's very different. We we can we can do the right things with, you know, sometimes I I do the right thing by by serving uh, my wife and doing things for her around the house, but sometimes I do it, and and as I'm walking towards it, I go <sighs> the big sigh. The big sigh. Okay, okay, I'll do it. The I, obvious I, sigh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I try to make it obvious. I don't know if I do that. I don't know. But you know, I can do the right thing without really having a desire to do it. But righteousness is is when we now have the desire to do what is right and to and to be filled by the right things and be pouring out into the right things. So I, I found myself um, from that moment of just trying to be obedient, I've I found the desire and a delight back in just in just spending time with the Word of God. Mm. Um, and it's been it, it's been really neat and something that that I I totally uh, give credit to the Holy Spirit for bringing me back to that mm-hmm. when I lost some of that. Yeah, yeah. And and it's, and it's brought me back now that we're kind of back in the office, back yeah. halfway normal. Well, and and I want to add to that too. From what I just yeah. heard, he didn't just bring you back, but he uses the word to speak to you. You know, yeah. I mean, I mean, how you sat down, you opened your Bible, and you just. What made you go to the Sermon on the Mount that brought you to this revelation of just being obedient uh, with the goal of, of eternal life, but just being consistently obedient in, in spending time in the Word of God? Yeah. I mean, I don't think that that's just a coincidence, you know, that, yeah. that the Spirit has just brought you to read the Bible again and then... Here's a powerful message yeah. that reinforces uh, the Spirit bringing you to read the Bible. <laughs> yeah, no, you're exactly right. Um, it, it's it's so powerful, just just the words of Jesus, and and that is that really that idea of of righteousness is really what the Sermon on the Mount is about. Mm-hmm. Is is about not just doing the right things. You've heard it said, do not kill i'd say don't even hate Mm -hmm. you know it's it's about that deeper internal uh relationship with god um that leads us to those things and so yeah it's total reinforcement uh totally the spirit moving no credit of my own do i do i take for all this that that it's i i do not have not historically had uh, the most admirable reading my scripture daily for a long time you know yeah. i had that i haven't been um been anybody's high bar for that uh but the holy spirit's really been bringing me along in that yeah um even even recently through this and and really because of this maybe i wouldn't have had or wouldn't have taken this time to to step into that mm-hmm. uh without without being forced to uh, 
to be home and, and yeah. not not think about where do I need to go? I need to go get ready. I need to, you know, you know, I still, still try to accomplish things in a day, but, but the day started with a different mentality than if I need to think about being somewhere at a certain time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that, that sort of mentality really allowed me to break some of the mental habits I had when I first wake up in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. I, as you're saying that, a phrase came to my mind, trim the fat. Trim the fat of the day. Yeah. And just yeah, get yeah. to the good portion. Uh, just focus on uh, that, the goodness, you know, the, the, the family, the, the people in your lives, the, the, the church, you know, the, the, the spirit, the lessons. Yeah. Uh, trim the fat. Yeah. Get rid of everything else that, that doesn't, uh, apply that is just kind of junky uh, that uh, is not nourishing yeah you know things that aren't good for you yeah yeah cut them out um, Colossians 3 mm-hmm. put to death therefore whatever belongs to the sinful nature yeah um, <laughs> I, I've spent a lot of time trying to like swat away and bat down the things that belong to sinful nature instead of putting them to death. Mm, mm. Like, do whatever it takes. Yeah. And so this time has has really done a lot of work in in helping put to death some things, some of the, the natural tendencies you have when you first wake up in the morning. Oh, check the phone. Oh, I got to get ready. Oh, I got to hurry. Oh, I got to be up. I got to... What's the latest numbers? What's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we, we, we've kind of had some of the some of the fat trimmed for us in yeah. some ways yeah. which has been uh which has been really really good yeah. if if we'll to the extent that we're paying attention to how that's happening to us and keeping the balance and keeping the balance yeah yeah great summary <laughs> sure yeah yeah <laughs> so what are we what are we leaving with here pay attention yeah um, what is the spirit? What is listen. the spirit? Yeah, yeah, listen. Pay attention and listen. What is the spirit telling you? Uh, what does that spirit sound like? Uh, what are your gifts and what are your talents? Uh, who are you? Who are you? Yeah. When you first wake up in the morning, and and maybe that's maybe that's a combination of things we've talked about here today. Yeah, absolutely. When you, when you first wake up in the morning, who are you? Yeah. Identity. Identity. Mm -hmm. And am I my social media personality? Mm -hmm. Am I my career? Mm. Am I an an A-plus church member? Yeah. And, you know, those things aren't necessarily bad. Some of them seem really good. Yeah. Um, Am I depression? Oh, wow. Yeah. Am I all alone? Yep. Yep. So first thing in the morning, who are you? Mm-hmm. And paying attention throughout the day to how God answers that question. Yeah. Through the word, through the people around you, through the messages that you're hearing. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that you know, that, yeah. that Jesus has said to you. Yeah. What's the focus? Yeah. You know, it kind of goes back to Mitch's lesson this Sunday and one of the points is, is focus, you know. Mm. If we focus, if we remain focused on Jesus, on God, on the Spirit, uh, they, will, they will naturally see us through. It's like two plus two equals four, yeah. you know. Uh, focusing on, on Jesus, the Spirit, and God equals seeing us through these these tough times. You know, Talking about paying attention, uh, this last Sunday I was standing out in the courtyard at our 8:30 outdoor service. Mm-hmm. Uh, the singing was beautiful. It was, you know, the, it was blue skies. Uh, the sun was was coming up in the morning. Uh, blue skies and rainbows and sunbeams from heaven. Kind yes, of, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe appropriate song to sing. <laughs> but the singing was just outstanding outside in that courtyard. And, and then Mitch begins to, to speak a word of God. And, and 
and I couldn't help but think I saw a small glimpse, a very small glimpse of of heaven right there. Mm. You know, because we'll still be praising and honoring and worshiping God in heaven. Yeah. Uh, just very perhaps similar to that that moment. It was a a gardenous area. Gardenous. That's a it's, really it's, good I, word. I, I, guess, I don't I, know if that's a real word. Or I not, just I just word. made it up. That's it a was, good word. It, it it looked like the garden. Yeah. You know. Uh, thank you for that, Kevin. Uh, <laughs> that's a good one. I'm gonna use that again. I I have a lot of words that I just make up. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it was just a, a beautiful moment. And I, and I couldn't help, you know, the Spirit saying, pay attention. Mm. I was able to capture that moment, that, that small moment as we sang and as we, we had a, a word, uh, a spoken word of, of worshiping God um, and looking around at all the people sitting out there, um, it was just it was just a beautiful moment and and uh yeah that's really good pay attention pay attention well i think that wraps us up for today you guys put in the comments below what has the holy spirit been reminding you of or what have you been taught through the holy spirit uh during this time uh, that you might want to share with us the um, ways that we can just engage as a church and continue this conversation going. Thanks for joining us here on Conversations at the Park. And it's not just conversations with the park with Kevin and Mark. You know, I just want to reiterate that fact yep. of, of making those comments below or feel free to give us a call. Uh, and we would love to have an extended conversation with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Love you guys. Have a great rest of your week. Let me tell you about my future. Let me speak of the peace of God.